Complex sales funnels, upsells with countdown timers, absurd guarantees and flexing big numbers, rented Lamborghinis and beautiful women on a yacht for a paid photo shoot to market the product. That was the state of internet marketing 10 years ago. And you still see some of it now. And I don't believe it's all bad. Most of the things that I talk about in my videos, I don't actually believe are all bad. I'm just using them to help frame a discussion like I am here. But over the past 10 years, it seems like most of the big names or the things that we are exposed to on the internet, people are people seem like they're walking on eggshells and bending the truth to make an income. Start an agency. You can make $100,000 fast. So you can learn one skill that you hate to work with people that you hate. Start a drop shipping store. You can ship straight from China. So you can sell useless products and contribute to the cheap dopamine extravaganza going on online. Target this niche and never break out of it. Never evolve. Never incorporate your interests into your work. Always squeeze the most money you can out of your customers. Okay, nobody actually said that, but it was implied in their teachings. I don't really care if you go out and do these things. I feel like they can be a decent stepping stone. And I made a tweet the other day about how uh, the most successful people, they use unethical strategies and spin them in an ethical way. That is how you start to integrate your shadow, right? It is much better than repressing your emotions and having and starting to unconsciously manipulate people because everyone has a dark side. Everyone has a shadow. To think you are absolutely pure is just idiotic and even more egoic than you think because you're thinking it's not egoic. You need a, a modality or a vessel to integrate your shadow. And so sales, marketing, persuasion, influence, and practicing these things in business in order to sell a beneficial product is a very useful thing to do with your life. So these things aren't bad and there's a better way of going about it. And that's why you watch these videos, right? Uh, you're, you're subscribed to my channel because you want to create a better life. And maybe you've experienced these business models before and have tried them out for three to six months or however long it takes to start seeing some results and you're just not content with your results you're not satisfied with your work you don't see it becoming fulfilling to you and that's the entire reason you got into this so if you've watched my videos you know that i am here to tell you that there is a way to do what you want or do what you enjoy and pull in an income doing so and this entire video uh, came about because I was on a Zoom call with a guy named Michael in the Modern Mastery community, one of the members, and we hit it off and we were talking about the future of the creator economy. And we noticed some patterns because he's deep in the business game, I'm deep in the business game, and we've noticed certain things. And the first to just kind of frame this discussion is that the level of market sophistication across the board is increasing as a whole. And so market sophistication in this sense is the awareness of the products and services available on the market, right? So the market right now is pretty dang flooded with all of this shallow, cheap advice, like how to get laid 101, how to pick up girls, how to start this agency business, whatever, whatever, all of these quick fix products that neglect the big picture of business, right? And without a big picture, without being able to see into the future and have that sense of fulfillment or sense of mastery behind what you're doing over a long enough time period, you're going to burn out and you are not going to enjoy your life when the entire reason you are doing this is to enjoy your life more. And so with that raising of the level of market sophistication, it's just like the school system, how most of us, especially if you're watching this video, have lost trust in the school system. Right. But now people are losing trust in and have not had that much trust for the shady marketing tactics that have been presented over the last decade of Internet marketing as a whole. So to start this off, this is this week's visual. Right. So on this is the future of education in my eyes, where a student, instead of going through the school system, which uh, prefers conformity, memorization, standardized tests, convergent thinking and just becoming a cog in the machine and then being trained into the societal system or the social fabric as an employee, a student will go through the creator economy and be able to pursue their curiosities, find a community, learn relevant skills that you can actually make money with, start a real world project without having or needing any credentials. There's no gatekeepers on the internet and then acquiring the specific knowledge necessary along the way to become an entrepreneur. And so 
Um, a lot of you know my philosophy about how everyone is an entrepreneur. Some just decide to get paid for the value they have to provide. Uh, I also talk about how entrepreneurship is modern day survival. Our ancestors were entrepreneurs and they serve their communities, right? In the past, you had a little niche community that in this case, it was like a physical community rather than an unlimited digital community where you had a specific thing that you could provide inside of that physical community, whether you were a cook or the the naturopath, right? You helped people heal or you were the doctor or you went out and hunted for food. You created fires. You were uh, taking care of the kids, whatever it may be. Things have subtly shifted, right? In terms of like tangible things, but our psyche remains the same, right? And so we have to fulfill the same needs through entrepreneurship. And so my first point with this to illustrate communities is that uh, reality is not compartmentalized, right? When people go to school, they usually start somewhat broad with like general studies and then they niche down and into a specific compartment, right? They go to for a biology degree or a certain doctor degree, right? They get very specific. And what that does is that neglects the holistic nature of life. And so the same holds true for online business where they tell you to niche down as far as fucking possible so you can like target a specific problem within that. But like building an audience and a personal brand is somewhat new, right? More people are talking about it now. And to be quite honest, in my experience in the past three years of me doing this previously freelancing, so I understand both sides of the argument, the strategies for making an income are vastly different, right? If you want to niche down and stay very focused on one little niche, you are limiting your audience growth and your future potential to pivot. So uh, an example, just to paint the picture, Zuby is someone on Twitter and other platforms now who's grown quite a bit where his main topic that he talks about is like political stuff, self-improvement, but he sells um, a fitness program and he makes music, right? You're, you're just a personal brand. You're attracting people that like you and then you are niching down on a specific problem or goal that people relate with and then you're positioning a product to be perceived from the lens of that problem or goal and then you are selling it to the people that resonate with that in your audience. You're not like not every single person in your audience is a customer right away, right when they follow you. And so with this, the essence of marketing is getting people from point A to point B via a transformation, right? And th what's in the middle there from point A to point B isn't so compartmentalized to something like biology, right? In my case, Modern Mastery, the community, I help people work less, earn more, enjoy life. I can create like a better point B and illustrate that point, but it's to live a good life, right? That is a niche goal. Most people don't want that. Some do, and even less want it from me as a teacher, right? People resonate with me. That's niche enough. And so with that, what is my process from going to point A to point B? It's not limited to one thing like building a business. It's health, wealth, relationships. It's fucking everything that it takes to create a good life. And if you limit yourself to one specific thing, then you are limiting the value that you can give your audience, right? And this is what I'm trying to paint with this entire video. So that was the first point to start to frame this conversation. The second point is that we need more holistic solutions for a community with a shared purpose. So Napoleon Hill has a concept called a master mind. And in essence, what that is, it is a group of one or more people or two or more people. So a group of people with a shared purpose. And by working together, they can actualize that purpose 10 times faster than they would be able to alone, right? So you are building a community of people with a same purpose. That's what you're attracting people to is your vision or your purpose for the future. And then by combining minds, you are able to help other people hit that much, much, much faster. Your audience in this case is your community that you are serving. And each of them in this creator economy are going to have their own community as well if they decide to lean into their entrepreneurial nature. And so what you're doing is you're attracting this community and then you're distilling what you know, your knowledge, expertise, experience, skill set to them in order to reach the goals that you set for them, right? You are becoming an educator. And so the purpose that you are helping people achieve is the niche in itself. But the way you help people achieve that goal is not niche down. It's holistic, right? What is everything it takes 
to reach that goal? Is it starting a business? Is it beginning self-improvement? Is it nurturing your relationships, right? We'll talk about this more. So we need fewer shallow promises and more solutions to reach meaningful goals. And that means that the foundation of the information you give out as a creator needs to have people set meaningful goals for themselves. It needs the foundation of every single teaching needs to be critical thinking, but modern business models don't do that, right? They pay no regard to that. Drop shipping a fancy little flashlight has no soul. And then creating like a, a basic journal with a print on demand strategy, just so you can sell something like to get in on whatever little game there is, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. But you're here because you want to do more, right? You want to not be that person. You actually want to contribute to people's lives. And so the same holds true for starting an agency with a skill that you don't give a shit about to sell to people that you don't give a shit about in order to pull in cash that is just like there's no there's nothing there. So the third point is clarity above all because the past decade of internet marketing has banked on complexity. Products and services would have the same simple solutions just repackaged in a new way because that is marketing, right? You go and look at any self-help book on habits and they're all saying the same thing, but they're different in the form of how they're told, which is a, actually a good thing. I'm not blaming books here because Books are usually more holistic than not because it involves the author's personal experience or you're tying in different anecdotes. But when it comes to courses or even internet content in general, it's just step, 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 step. Here's how you do it. And there's nothing unique about this. You just need to go and do it. And I'm going to, the next person is going to repackage it into something else. And then everyone's going to get stuck in this surface level bubble and never seek out the depth behind things or the root cause, right? So now people want a clear, simple, and practical solution from the lens that they learn best from or from the teacher that they learn best from, right? So I am a very philosophical person and people follow me because I'm philosophical. And some people are very practical and they enjoy the, the, practicality, zero fluff stuff. I love fluff. Like I, the tweets or the social media posts where it's like, I only like to read books that don't have fluff or cut through the fluff and give me the straight value. And this is uh, with me specifically because like, I just like fluff. It helps me frame certain things. It gives me the nuance or the big ideas that the, the same old actionable advice won't give, right? There's only so many principles in all of this stuff. Like if you want to go and learn how to start a billion dollar company, you can do that in like, 10 steps and then everything else is really like there's steps to do things and most people don't do that because they don't have the fluff that resonated with them they don't have the why that made them actually go and act on something right people are so stuck in this little surface level trap of i want i want to know exactly how to do this 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 and this without the the vision or the why or even the clarity to get there because of that path it's just it's all out of whack. And so as a creator, by leaning into the voice that you learn best from or using that to help others or just following the people that you learn best from, the student teacher relationship gets a lot better there in the creator economy because you attract people with your shared goals and the ones that learn best from you. And this starts to illustrate the depth behind uh, my saying you are the niche. And I have a video on this as well in the one person business playlist. So now we're going to talk about the emergence and demand for the holistic synthesizer. So under this philosophy that I'm painting, the creator economy cannot get saturated because one, your community evolves. So when you don't subscribe to a specific label, compartment, or niche of reality that limits what you are capable of, the only option is to evolve beyond that. Humans and communities or collectives do not only stick to one goal right? It evolves with time. You, you achieve a goal and then you set a new one and then you achieve it and you set a new one and you achieve it and you set a new one. And so as a creator, you evolve. And that means that your products evolve, right? So I started out as a web designer and I sold a web design product because the only thing you can do is teach what you know from personal experience. And so my products or services revolved around web design. I sold a web design product. I freelance with web design. I sold a freelancing product as well. And over time, as I created new products, as those didn't fulfill me as much and I wanted more and I wanted to grow, I stopped selling those and I desaturated the market. So a new web designer can come in, right? So if creators, or this is just creators in general, if they actually keep improving themselves and don't get stagnant and continue building, then your products evolve and you desaturate the market underneath you. So the third point here is that 
you have a unique web of interests, right? It's a web of interests. As an example, I've talked about this many times before, go watch the other videos, but a person that is interested in fitness, business, and spirituality is vastly different from a person that talks about fitness, business, and tech, right? Just because of the infinite combinations those hold and the, the topics that spring from those and how you articulate those over 50,000 tweets or 1,000 Instagram posts or even 1,000 YouTube videos. And then the fourth point of why the creator economy cannot get saturated is that large creators have ample resources. It's not rare to see large accounts decrease output on all fronts. I see this all the time uh, on Twitter, like with people over 300,000 followers, they tweet like once a day, maybe once every three days. They have resources. They don't need more, right? They have all the money they could have. And you, it, this isn't rare on YouTube either. If you go and look at someone with a million subscribers, I'd say 50% of the time, they've either stopped posting altogether or they're posting like once a month, once every three months or something like that just to pop in and say what's up. And so this gives new creators the ability to flood the market, generate attention for themselves and show that they are an authority in the space and then continue evolving, evolving, evolving until they reach a point where they also have ample resources, mostly in the form of money, and then they can go on to start another business. Like right now, I'm starting a software business. I'm also writing a book. I'm doing other high lever activities so that I can eventually move on. I don't ever want to leave social media per se, but I don't want it to, it doesn't consume my life, but it did previously. I, I want to, the entire goal behind my efforts is to be in full control of my days. And so over 10 years of attempting to solve that problem, that's what you need to do. You need to evolve. So the holistic synthesizer, which is the solution to this all and what I would encourage you to become or aim to become. So let's define what this holistic synthesizer is. It is someone who pursues their own vision, forges their path with the unique skills and interests they acquire. They do not view those skills or interests as individual parts but as an interconnected whole that are necessary aspects of their life, not temporary pieces for a quick cash grab. Their life's work is to distill, educate, and distribute their personal experience on the path. In short, a holistic synthesizer is someone who documents their journey to the good life in an educational and persuasive manner. That's what everyone's trying to do, right? Why not be honest about it? Every single person's niche is how to achieve the good life. I saw a tweet somewhere. This sounds abs This sounds extremely cringe, but it's so true. Uh, and I saw this like two years ago, but it was a tweet and it was like, everyone's, at the end of everyone's journey, they are a life coach, okay? So why not lean into that now? You don't have to label yourself as a life coach. Be Get creative with it. Like call yourself the the modern conqueror or something, same thing, but that's what a brand is, right? Don't call yourself a life coach, create a fucking good brand. Your brand is your story, where you are now, regardless of experience. Your content is your school, what helped you get there, pass it down. Your product is the map, a holistic system that helps people get to where you are with less trial and error. The internet has given you the power to self-educate faster than ever has been possible to just educate yourself and learn new skills. Take it upon yourself to improve your life, pursue your curiosities, and share your discoveries. That's all this is. When more people master their personal lives, they can put the creative ability of their minds together to work on global problems. By the point you do this, you'll know what to do. By the point you master your survival or uh, improve yourself to the point of self-actualization, you'll know what to do. You have to build your own thing. Entrepreneurship is modern day survival. Your psyche is wired to hunt. You are neurobiologically rewarded for hunting for your survival, not for being a monkey in a cubicle. Hunt for money to ease survival-induced stress and open room for creativity. The creator philosophy is not a business model, but a way of life. And in essence, it's improve yourself and then improve others that want to be helped from the lens that you were distilling information from or from your personal experience. So here are the steps to doing this so you can start acting today. Step number one is of course to master your survival. And this is, mastery is a process, right? You don't have to wait until you hit the point where you've mastered your survival because frankly, I don't think you'll ever like actually register as you mastering your survival. It's an ever, it's a never ending process. What I'm saying here is that you need to master your survival for life because you can't sustain authenticity when you need something from someone else for survival, right? If you can't, if you aren't self-reliant and 
able to generate an independent income source and have a sense of self-confidence that does not require you. You don't need anything from others, right? So you can act authentically. Every single individual on this earth has to self-actualize in order to contribute to humanity in the best way they can. Self-actualization is to fulfill the desire to become everything one can be to actualize your potential. While this can be done with the perfect career path that you find or create for yourself, I, I can't help you there. I haven't done that, right? I'm here to help you with business and self-improvement and everything that I've done because that's what we're talking about here. You can go find someone else if you don't resonate with this message. That's the point. And the other thing is that I, I didn't choose that route because I saw that you will never have full control over your days or the way that you make money or anything. So my recommendation is still the same. I've talked about this before many times, but you have to solve the biological problems in your life. Improve your health, finances, and socialization. Discover your interests through improvement. And this takes time, but it does not limit you from making an independent income right now, which we'll talk about in the next video where I discuss the minimum viable offer, right? So you can actually just learn a skill and start selling it. And the other thing you have to understand is that 95% of people's problems revolves around survival based problems, right? Health, wealth, relationships, and happiness. So if you can solve that for yourself and then create a system to help you do that, like a system in this case, let's say it's like a gym program that you create for yourself that you don't copy from someone else. That's the key here. You have to figure it out for yourself so that you actually have something that you can bring to the market. If you just copy it, what everyone else is doing and never zoom out and create something of your own, then you aren't going to succeed in this game. You have to test, experiment, fail, and create a system that resonates with you because you're attracting people that resonate with you. Another thing there is that people don't learn best from someone that's 10 steps ahead of them. They learn best from someone that is two steps ahead of them, right? Someone who has freshly solved the problem. And that's why I recommend creating a course, right? Because I usually create my courses when I'm two to three steps ahead of who I once was, right? After I start seeing results. And of course I can iterate on the product, but then I'm able to position that product to someone who was two steps behind me then. So it's evergreen, right? I'm not teaching from the extremely high level that I'm at now. So step number two, after mastering your survival is to create your own philosophy. There is enough shallow advice on how to make money, how to get laid and various methods for putting a bandaid over your mental health. We need more individuals that are truth seekers. The individuals that understand that step-by-step -step shallow advice looks good on the outside, but is hollow on the inside. We need more people that can attack the root of problems, which is often metaphysical, spiritual, or existential. It's rarely shallow self-help advice because that's what the self-help advice came from was from the philosophical stuff. The world is desperate for depth and that it, you can only create depth by forging your own path. Philosophy is based on experience and you have to self-reflect to notice patterns in your life and you need to study the greats and align those and, and find the patterns in their life that aligns with your life. You have to set your mind on an ideal future and then you need to start and view the view your problems and your day-to-day -day actions from the lens of your ideal self so that you have a compass for your decision making because we aren't here to get the same results that everyone else has gotten for the past decade. And so as an example, my ideal future is kind of what I'm living right now because that's what you do. You just live your ideal future and eventually the amount of time you get to spend on that ideal future becomes like fully actualized. So my ideal future is four hour work days, writing every single morning for like two hours, hitting the gym, building businesses or not even businesses, but side projects. Like I want to build uh, the mastery facility, which would be like a co-working space, a fucking sick gym and other things and expand modern mastery and build my software and just do fun things and be able to eliminate the things that I don't want to do. And that philosophy alone is much, much, much different from many others. And so what I do is I study the greats and I build things and make mistakes and then I align my philosophy with certain aspects of theirs. I take the best from the greats from multiple different ones and make it my own. That's how you forge a unique philosophy. And you have to be open to change that philosophy along the way when you encounter new information or new ways of doing things, better ways of doing things. So step number three is to turn this philosophy along the way into a public school. That's what social media is. I'm convinced that the future of schooling will be done online with creators as teachers and each student can join the school 
that aligns the most with their interests, values, and preferred method of learning. One school system would dominate 12 plus years of their life. So students would evolve beyond one creator-based school after a few years, of course, and then they would go on to the next and eventually they would go on to start their own because that's what you do. That's the cyclical nature of life. That's what we're doing throughout all of this stuff is we're just passing on what we learn, right? And in everyday life too, that's why you communicate with people. You're just passing on what you know, your beliefs, what you're learning and everything else in accordance with the conscious, subconscious or un unconscious goal that you are trying to achieve at that point. Everything you do physically is goal directed and not just physically, but mentally. If you are not being, if you are not absolutely at one with the present moment, then it is goal directed. So you want to make it your life's work to create a library of knowledge, a holistic library of knowledge for everything that you are doing in life. You continue evolving, your goals continue evolving, you continue moving forward, and you pass down the lessons you learn along the way, your ideas, beliefs, opinions, actionable advice, everything. And you can notice this in the creator economy, right? I'm, I guarantee that a lot of your favorite creators are doing this exact thing, even though they may not be conscious of what they're doing, but they are doing a great thing and they are going to stand out for years to come. And your public school is digital real estate. So I recommend uh, at least starting with top of funnel social media to grow a broader audience like Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, sure, sometimes TikTok. And then at, along the way, you can start things like YouTube, podcast, newsletter, or just a blog to start nurturing that audience and start fleshing out your own ideas more because the long form stuff takes practice, but eventually you get very good at it. And then you can start to fuel that with your top of funnel socials that you've been growing this whole time. And then what your product will be is implementation. So you'll sell a variety of low ticket products. And then for the people that want more for you or who, who have committed to you, you will have high ticket products like freelancing, coaching, consulting, or tutoring, which we'll talk about in the next video. And so this is what I've dedicated myself to teaching because I see the opportunity in this space. So I offer the two hour writer course to help people get their ideas out in a persuasive, impactful manner and are able to distill their philosophy and create this public school through writing. And then I offer a higher ticket, a bit more expensive digital uh, economics masterclass to productize yourself for people that are serious about making it work because some aren't. So they dabble in modern mastery or to our writer. And then the people that are serious and are committed to my philosophy in order to go and create their own, they sign up for digital economics. And so eventually after doing this and creating content and creating products and letting them evolve and treating this as your life's work, and distilling and distributing your philosophy, eventually you'll be able to do whatever the fuck you want, right? It's like Zuby where he can create music. He can go and sell a fitness program if he likes. I'm eventually going to do some fitness stuff because I want to start that mastery facility gym. And you have to think long term for this. I'm thinking like 10, 20 years with all of this. So step number four is after creating your own school is to uh, create a holistic solution as a product. And so I've worked with like 5,000 plus creators and that's not exaggerating, that's under exaggerating. And the biggest problem that they face is that they don't know what to sell or they don't know how to make what they sell unique. And so, of course, I'm going to talk about this in the next video, but I'll give you a basic rundown here to just provide some value. So until then, here's what you do. Step one is to identify a desirable goal. So what is one big goal in your life that you are either trying to achieve, have achieved or just achieved like very far in the past, right? Are you fit? Have you acquired a certain skill? Like don't limit yourself to like, oh, the, only this thing makes money so I can only sell that. If you've even acquired a skill, right? If you know how to edit in uh, Adobe Photoshop, then sell a fucking Photoshop course, right? Or just put a product on the market. If you know how to create a website, create a product called how to create a website and improve from there. It doesn't have to be perfect because until you actually get a product out, you have nothing to improve. You have nothing to iterate on and it just, you're going to be all of these lessons of life and business lessons are going to be passing you by because you don't have anywhere to apply it. So you have to start selling something. And so the key with this is not to focus on the goal itself. Like, oh, I learned how to create a website. It's to focus on the lifestyle it creates for you, right? So why am I selling a writing course? Not because like, oh, I want to become a writer. That's a part of it. But it's because of you should read my landing page where I talk about how cathartic it is to write. It's helped my thinking skills. It's helped me think clear. It's helped me build an audience. It's helped me build a business where I can really do 
most of what I want, or at least I have, like I know for 100% certainty that I can create that life. And so step number two after creating a goal is to identify a starting point, right? Because marketing is getting people, people from point A to point B with a unique solution. So where were you at in the past? Why didn't you like being there, right? Paint a picture of the lifestyle you were living and make the contrast between the lifestyle that you have now. What's different? What's beneficial? What was painful about the past? What's beneficial about now? What's the why? And so now you want to outline a unique path. So think of a book, right? They have point A where there's a problem that opens a curiosity loop to hook people into the book. And then there's a point B. So the goal is achieved. The lifestyle is created. The dream happens. And then along the way, there's chapters. So what do people want to know? And this is where the holistic solution comes into play because if I'm creating a self-improvement product and it's like the warrior program where point B you're, you have the, you live the life of a warrior right now. What is necessary there? Is it only fitness? No. Is it only mindset? No. Is it only business? No. You tell me what is the synthesis that you are going to use to create that unique solution, right? It's, it could be a culmination of business principles, mindset advice, a fitness program. It could be everything. What is your way? Have fun, get creative. What is your way of getting them to point B? So step number five is of course, to branch into new opportunities. So this is a bit further down the road, but as you go about this, as you create products, as you sell products, as you build your audience, as you uh, create your community and distribute your philosophy to your community in the creator economy that cannot be saturated, eventually you'll have enough resources to pursue bigger and better goals for yourself and desaturate the market while still being like on social media, right? And having a good time and being like the legacy there or leaving your legacy and just checking in and having a good time. I know Hamza did this recently, even though I think he's starting to do some like YouTube stuff and sell something related to that. It's a good pivot, but uh, yeah, it's just, just be conscious of what's going on on social media and you can create some good stuff. So with that, I appreciate you like subscribe, uh, join the newsletter to get the newsletter, sign up for products to get the products. Have a good one. See ya.